Welcome to the opening panel for the course Cast in India and the United States. I am Dr. Michelle Schleoffer, an applied social psychologist and a professor at Salisbury University and one of the co-instructors of the course. The course will be centered around reading the book Cast, Origins of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson, which compares race relations in the United States to caste systems in India and Nazi Germany. This is the first of two live events we will hold for the course. The second will be on Friday, January 22nd, from 8.30 to 10 a.m. Eastern and 7 to 8.30 p.m. IST. So please mark your calendars for that closing panel. Hi, I am Dr. Rachel Steele and I am the other co-instructor for the course. I am a social psychologist and an assistant professor of psychology at Salisbury University. And this morning's schedule will be divided into two parts. First is the public facing portion in which dignitaries from Salisbury University and Pandit Dean Dial Petroleum University will share some words with us about um, the institution's missions and the collaboration between them. Then the second part of our time together will be for the students in the course and for us as instructors to talk about the structure of the course and to get to know each other better. So first, we would like to introduce Dr. Charles White, president of Salisbury University. Dr. White began his tenure as SU's ninth president in July of 2018. The son of two teachers and raised in Northern Virginia, White earned his BS in chemistry at the University of Virginia in 1977 and his PhD at Caltech in 1982. Originally a professor of chemistry and an expert in chemical explosions, he came to SU after serving as the president of Weber State University in Utah. Dr. White is the author or co-author of more than 170 academic papers. He has continued his research throughout his time as an administrator, contributing to seven published papers in academic journals during his time at Weber State. So thank you, Dr. White. Good morning, everybody. Greetings. Um, I'm Chuck White, president of Salisbury University. I welcome everybody who's participating today. I know we have faculty and students from here in Salisbury and in India, as well as other community guests who have joined us for this opening panel discussion. It's really exciting for SU to offer this winter term course in connection with Pandit Dindial Petroleum University in India. For those who aren't familiar, SU is home to about 8,600 students. We're located on the east coast of the United States, close to the Atlantic Ocean. We offer bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees in business, education, science, health and human services, and arts and humanities. International education has long been an important part of the SU experience. Many of our students study abroad and our faculty teach and research abroad and international students and faculty come to our campus. The COVID-19 pandemic halted all of this, of course, but I know that our assistant provost for international education and other faculty members here have been finding new ways to connect classrooms across the globe. We want to support the exchange of ideas and perspectives across borders, even without physical travel. The winter term course is an important part of these efforts. I applaud our Fulton School faculty and our international partners for developing this opportunity. The book you'll be examining was written by a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. It's a very timely examination of race and racism as a caste system in the United States. And it draws parallels to other caste systems, including in India. One New York Times reviewer called the book an extraordinary document with the keynote nonfiction book of the American century thus far, and one of the most powerful nonfiction books he had ever encountered. I look forward to reading more of it, more of it along with you. I also look forward to future exchanges and partnerships between our two universities. Hopefully this is just the beginning of our collaboration. Thank you all for being here. I hope your discussions this month are enlightening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. White. We will next be hearing from Dr. Sundar Manhuran, Director General at Pandit Dean Dial Petroleum University. A renowned educationist, scientist, and administrator, Dr. Manhuran 
obtained his doctoral degree from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore in 1991. He has over 30 years of extensive experience in teaching and research in the area of material science and nanotechnology. He has more than 120 research publications. He has been successful in converting ideas to reality, having 19 patents to his credit, six of which were granted USA patents. He has received numerous awards, including an innovation gold medal by the Department of Science and Technology in Lockheed Martin, USA. Professor Manho Haram. Thank you, Dr. Michel, and uh, congratulate uh, co-host Dr. Rachel. Uh, thank you, Dr. White and Dr. Olmsted and Dr. Periboom for having the Indian um, uh, counterparts here. Uh, one thing I share in common with Dr. Charles White is both of us come from chemistry and uh, both of us have worked on high energy materials. That's very incidental for this evening. Um, Pandit Dindayal Petroleum University is placed in Gujarat and I bring warm greetings from the entire fraternity of Pandit Dindayal uh, Petroleum University. Shortly, our university will be renamed as Pandit Dindayal Energy University because in the recent convocation, our Honorable Prime Minister recognized the um, pivotal contributions of our university and suggested that we change the word from petroleum to energy. Probably during the course that you're having, we might have this christening of our university as PDEU. And this is for your kind information. And this is a good news as well, because we represent the entire energy spectrum and uh, Pandit Dindayal Petroleum University is incidentally the brainchild of our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, who felt that there should be an exclusive university which caters to the fundamentals and application of energy in India. And uh, we have uh, several uh, path-breaking innovations in the non-conventional energy resources. Um, alongside of the traditional petroleum and gas exploration. And we are ably supported by our Chancellor, President, uh, Mr. Mukesh Ambani, who needs no introduction because he has completely anchored the petroleum industry in India as well as uh, globally um, in, uh, in all the continents. Um, we have over 6,000 students studying in four schools, School of Petroleum Technology, School of Technology, School of uh, Petroleum Management. And uh, the most important uh, school is School of Liberal Arts, which was started even before the School of Technology was commissioned in this university. So that shows uh, the priority that the Liberal Arts takes um, in the uh, portals of um, PDPU. Um, we have uh, very uh, dynamic faculty members in the School of Liberal Studies. And um, we have around um, uh, 300 faculty members um, encompassing all the fields. Uh, now, this particular uh, engagement with Salisbury uh, is very heartening because uh, I have heard of Salisbury University while I spent a year and a half at the University of Maryland College Park. Um, and I've been a regular visitor too. I never knew uh, a few years down the lane, I will be addressing a forum like this. I'm very, very happy to be uh, with you this evening. And I'm sure our students are very eager to engage in the discussion on uh, this particular book authored by Isabel Wilkerson. There's one quote that she mentioned, uh, she has mentioned about, um, uh, she's quoting Albert Einstein. If the majority knew of the root of this evil, then the road to its cure would not be long. Uh, uh, it's a very uh, nice uh, quote uh, on the casteism. Uh, but at the same time, I have to tell something positive about the diversity in India. Uh, we 
are at least 36 states and each state is like Europe. Uh, each state represents a particular caste and uh, diversity in terms of religion, uh, sometimes diversity in terms of culture, diversity in terms of uh, um, the uh, behavior of people uh, in all these 36 states. Uh, now, uh, we view uh, casteism in a negative sense, but at the same time, the diversity has brought unity in India. That is one thing which really holds all of us together, the diversity in terms of our birth or origin or the practices, family practices. But along with the diversity comes challenges in the form of caste. And that's what we are planning to discover here. One thing um, that I always felt and I practiced is uh, there is only one method or one antidote to casteism. The best antidote is to live a life where you appreciate diversity yourself. Then you can drive away casteism uh, across the country. There is no way that we can try to bring a global rule to drive away this evil. But uh, it calls for every person to commit, every person to live a life which will uh, shut the doors for casteism in, in our country, in our community. And that's the best way to respond to this bigger evil. So um, personally, I have been a witness in my own family, how my parents parents conducted themselves in the matter concerning caste. They were no respecters of uh, any particular caste, creed, or religion. They were highly neutral. In fact, in our home, in our family, we are multilingual, multicultural, and uh, we have enjoyed this togetherness in a big way. I'm sure this evening, uh, as we set forth our attention on discussion in, on caste in India, I'm sure it's going to bring a lot of uh, eye-opening debates and discussions. And uh, thank you for having PDPU on board in this uh, journey, in this discussion. I'm sure you're going to um, really bring a lot of good uh, um, ideas uh, through this forum. And I especially want to recognize the effort made by Dr. Ritu Sharma and Dr. Nigam, uh, trying to collaborate with Salisbury and bringing this forum uh, to existence. I really want to appreciate their efforts and I want to congratulate all the faculty members who are going to be part of this discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Manoharam. We will also be hearing from Dr. Karen Olmsted, Provost and Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs at Salisbury University. An ecologist by training, Dr. Olmsted oversees the university's four endowed schools, College of Health and Human Services, Honors College, University Libraries, Center for International Education, Registrar, and Graduate Studies and Research. Dr. Olmsted? Thank you, Dr. Schlehofer, and good morning, everyone. I'm so delighted to join you today for the launch of uh, this formal collaboration between PDEU, I guess I should say now, and Salisbury Thank University. You. The energy around this collaboration has been strong since it started with um, discussions between Drs. Martin Paraboom and Dr. Ritu Sharma, and I guess it's only appropriate that they're both associated with our schools of liberal arts as the, uh, the hearts of our universities. The American author Mark Twain said that Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. I really believe this is true. And so another sad loss of the pan as a result of the pandemic is the opportunity for us to travel, to learn, to visit, to visit each other, and to learn more about our world and the shared human experience. So this collaboration, I think, is not only timely because of the focus of the course, the book cast, but also for the opportunity for us to connect to and learn from each other at a time when physical travel isn't possible. But I have to say, I imagine on both of our campuses, our ability to do things virtually has been dramatically enhanced over the past year. And um, so I'm so just so delighted this morning to see everyone um, 
uh, even though we're so far apart. I smiled when I looked at your website last week and I have to agree that our campuses are not only the best places to study, but also the safest. So I wish you the best for the upcoming academic year. I'd like to thank Drs. Uh, Schleyhofer and Steele and others, the students and faculty that are involved in this course and anticipate that Isabel Wilkerson, the author of CAST, would be very excited to hear about this collaboration given the focus of her book. In CAST, Ms. Wilkerson says that we need a new framework for understanding the divisions in society and how we got where we are. I can't think of a better way to build this framework than to not only reach across academic disciplines, but to also to reach across universities, cultures, and countries to better understand the drivers of social constructs and societal challenges. And that's exactly what you're gonna do here. So I look forward to coming back on the 22nd and uh, hearing the discussion at that time as well. Universities like ours provide critical forms for education, discussion, and action. As Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. I look forward to continued partnership between our campuses, whether in courses like this with virtual meetings or through bilateral exchanges of students and faculty, um, perhaps through shared research projects or other collaborations across any number of disciplines. Please accept my best wishes for this course. I look forward to hearing all about it and for the uh, 2021 new year. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Olmsted. Um, now we will be hearing from Professor Negam Davi, who is the director of the School of Liberal Studies at Pandit Dindayal Petroleum University. Um, his specialty is contemporary Indian fiction, um, and he has held um, many academic and administrative positions at um, PDPU. So thank you for coming to share with us today. Hello, everybody. It's uh, wonderful to meet our partners from Salisbury University online. Uh, and uh, the topic that PDPU students are going to engage in about caste, the lies that divide us and separate us. They say God created human beings and human beings created differences. So without uh, talking much about the course that the students, of course, are going to engross in. I have a very small poem written by uh, Indian Tamil poet, Sundara Ramaswamy, which pretty highlights the topic that everybody is going to discuss. The title of the poem is, Who Are You? The poet is directly asking all the human beings this question. I read out that short poem to you all dedicated to this course and uh, our partners, Salisbury University and PDPU. The poet is asking, who are you? Are you really a human being? In that case, what is your hometown? Your language, your caste, caste subgroup, religious subsect, subdivisions of these subdivisions? Right. What is your height in centimeters? What color are you? What color are your eyes? Are you pink, yellow, black, or well-dosted coffee? Tell me in detail. Tell it precisely. What observance do you keep? What rituals do you follow? Are you veg or non-veg? What are the differences between your God and my God? Tell us each thing. Tell it precisely. Do you bury your dead or do you cremate? Right. Do you have such a thing as guilt? In your places of employment are some higher and some lower. What about your concept of sin? How many cartloads worth is your inferiority complex? May I see your handcuffs? Will you show me the fetters on your ankles? May I see the bandages about your eyes or the muzzle at your mouth? May I measure the depth of this hole in which you have been planted? Who are you? Are you a human being? Aren't you least like a human being? In that case, what is your hometown, your caste? Tell me each thing. Tell me is exactly. I'm very sure 
that when uh, the teachers from Salisbury University and students from PDPU would get together to discuss this differences of caste, color, race, and other differences, a lot of valuable brainstorming would evolve. And I'm sure together we can commit ourselves to the betterment of our society. Thank you very much and look forward to work with Salisbury University. Thank you, Dr. Dave, for sharing that poem. I think that that nicely encapsulates the reasons why we want to do collaborations like this across institutions. So we're, I know uh, Dr. Steele and I are looking forward to learning a lot from PDPU students. Um, and I want to now introduce Dr. Uh, Martin Paradeboom from Salisbury University's uh, Dean of School, sorry, Dean of the Fulton School of Liberal Arts and Professor, professor of History, uh, Dr. Paradeboom. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm so excited to, to be with you this morning. I wish I could take this course, um, but I guess I can't. <laughs> um, this is a culmination for me, I guess, of, of an experience that began four years ago. I was part of the Fulbright Nero International Education Administrator Seminar that uh, took a group of 11 American higher education uh, administrators uh, across India to three different uh, major cities uh, on a kind of a grueling tour of, of institutions of higher education. And I have to say that the name Petroleum in the university made me think, well, I'm a liberal education guy, I'm a history guy, what is, what's the appeal of this institution going to be? But the warm reception that we got at PDPU, at, that, at the erstwhile PDPU, uh, was, was, was very, very special. And uh, I really owe a lot to, uh, to Ritu, Dr. Sharma in particular, for, um, for that, that visit being very special in the beginning of what turned out to be, I think, a very uh, important partnership. So very excited about this. Uh, a year ago, I, I brought uh, an agreement signed by my uh, my bosses uh, to PDPU in Gandhi Nagar. And uh, so that formally launched the partnership, which I think is now blossoming, albeit in a virtual environment. Um, I, I have visited India three times over the course of my uh, life thus far, and, and so highly can recommend it to my American uh, colleagues here. It's just a, a, an incredible, enchanting place in so, so many ways. Um, I love India, and, and I'm so glad to see this partnership uh, taking shape. Um, and I think it's this is a great book for us to talk about, uh, in part because it's um, it's a popular press work. And I will say I'm a historian, so and and I in fact specialize in in the Second World War and National Socialism and the Holocaust, and so there's lots I can sort of pull apart in terms of what uh, Isabel Wilkerson has to say about National Socialism and, and what was happening at that time. But I think that's what she wants us to do. I think she wants us to talk, and this book has emerged as perhaps the the main best seller of, of a whole bunch of books in the United States that are selling very well right now and that speak, I think, to, to a real desire on the part of Americans to understand better uh, race and caste or whatever it is that divides us as a country and that is playing out as we speak uh, this week, some very important uh, things happening in, in our country in terms of uh, runoff elections and whatever the heck is going to happen on Wednesday uh, that, that does speak to uh, very fundamentally, I think, issues of race in our country. Um, and so going back to, to this book and, and other books like it, uh, How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram Kendi. And I have to say, this is now two, two books ago for me now. And the two books that I've read since then over the break, uh, I'm kind of looking at through the lens of this. It's one's a book by Larry McMurtry, who's a Texan author who writes about the West and cowboys, but race is very much a, a, a factor in that book. And uh, Karen, Dr. Olmsted uh, lent me uh, Americana by, um, uh, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichu, uh, which is another great book, and there's the word half caste appears in there, and it's a book. She's a Nigerian author. Um, just, just th these issues are so much around us, and so it's really important, I think, for us to to unpack them. And even if um, I could, you know, argue with with Isabel, and I would love the opportunity to to talk with her, uh, of course, to talk about this book in in great depth. Um, but it is so thought provoking and so discussion provoking. So I think it's a really great grounds for, for this course uh, and a course in psychology in particular, because it's about attitudes, it's about behavior, it's about perception. 
uh, and ways in which we just have to crack our, our patterns of thinking uh, in order to, to get a handle on the issues that divide us and that clearly stand in the way of our progress. Um, and, and, I, and I would really love to hear from our, from our colleagues in India as to, to how you, you feel about these issues, because um, for us, I think it really stands in the way. Um, and, and there's just so much more that could be said. I guess I'll just seize on one particular example. Uh, and I have to say that my, my wife and my, my two sons were, were sort of the uh, recipients, I guess, of my, my thoughts and questions as I read this book, you know, on walks and dinners over the course of the winter break, um, just because the things that she had to say were so, um, so worthy of further exploration. And I want to talk a little bit about her being on in first class on an, on an American airline, those examples specifically. And I thought, oh, you could push that a little bit further because, you know, that flight attendant, the racist flight attendant, the black flight attendant, doesn't that speak to the need for liberal education uh, and for uh, us to really attack institutional racism such that workers would be trained to... Um, uh, workers would be trained to to address and and confront uh, racism when they see it in the workplace. Uh, this is why these issues really need to be unpacked, not just by you know liberal arts majors, but by business majors and healthcare um, uh, major um, uh, majors and educators for sure. Um, so there's just a whole lot here that I think we need to uh, to explore. I think the um, the moment has come in the United States to to put this front and center. Uh, the the murder of George Floyd over the in the summer, um, the 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 murder of Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, so many before that, so many since, really speak to a need for people of, of goodwill to address our differences and in the end to embrace our shared humanity and to recognize that it's really through love and through mutual respect and kindness that, uh, that we build a better society. And right now that, that the, the lack of those things is standing in the way of our ability to function as a society. Uh, here in the United States, I'll speak for us. I hope that this discussion will, will unpack these issues as far as India is concerned as well. In fact, uh, for, for all of humanity. So again, I'm very, very excited about this uh, uh, initiative. So happy to see this partnership uh, blossoming and look forward to, to continuing these kind of interactions, but as well, seeing each other face to face. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Parabum. I just want to acknowledge that in the chat, um, somebody asked for the, the reading list that you were saying. Um, if you can, if you don't mind, I made note of some of them, but I can't remember all of them, but we can distribute that reading list out. Um, and last but not least, we will just hear from Dr. Ridu Sharma, Dean of the School of Liberal Studies and fellow psychologist from Pandit Dean Dayal Petroleum University. Dr. Sharma. Thank you, Professor Michelle and Professor Rachel respected dignitaries, faculty colleagues, and dear students from both Salisbury University and Pandit Deemdayal Petroleum University. Happy and prosperous new year 2021 to all of us. I wish to express our gratitude to everyone joining us today, uh, especially uh, we are incredibly grateful to Salisbury University President Dr. White, Director General PDPU Professor Manoharan, Salisbury University Provost Dr. Karen, Professor Nigam Dave, Director of SLS, Professor Martin Dean, Salisbury University, for their grac gracious presence, vision, and leadership. My enormous respect to all. My thank to Professor Egan, Professor Michelle, and Professor Rachel, who have conceptualized this course after a series of meetings and discussions. I thank all for providing PDPU students this opportunity to collaborate and learn. I also thank Mr. Martin from OIR and Shelley from PDPU, who has helped us in coordinating this entire course. It is a matter of immense pleasure and honor for all of us today to jointly host this first collaborative initiative as one credit course on caste from the psychological perspective. When academicians meet, they have a lot to exchange and simplifying something tangible, especially across the globe, is always challenging. The journey to the course traces back to a pleasant reunion with Professor Martin during annual conference at NAFSA, Washington, DC, in 2019. Just to add to what my director general has already mentioned, uh, we are a young university with a clear research emphasis. And this, this course is one of the modest attempt to further that motive. Through this course, we want to achieve twofold objective. One is to provide a platform to 
students, researchers, and academicians to exchange thoughts and indulge in synergetic action. And second, we want to reach out to campus of repute and credence. I'm happy to share that we have made some headway in a positive direction towards both these objective under the able leadership of Professor Manoharan, Director General PDPU. About this course, I believe it intends to ask ourselves some fundamental question as to why do we need to identify with the caste? The topic is sensitive and hence need to be um, accounted with high degree of sensibility for both deliberation and even dissemination of the viewpoint. We in psychology know that every person has a story. When this story is dearranged, it is because of the personal story of either denial or rejection. Healing and integration comes when the person discover or rediscover his or her own personal story. If we help this individual to discover his story, automatically we'll be able to help the individual to grow beyond the social structure, which generally inhibits the human potential. As psychology student, we know the discipline is about us with no exceptions. Our lived experiences, thoughts, understanding, interactions, and decision. It is about the way we live. Juxtaposing all these stereotypes and opinions surrounding it, the caste system in India was actually formulated by East India Company through the arbitration and the so-called protection of the citizen of the subcontinent. Pre-colonial India was instead an extensive, complex, regionally diverse system of faith and social identities that probably still has no parallel in the world history. And I think Professor Sundar Manoharan has already mentioned about it. Complete control of this complex society by Britishers led to dharmkartas or leaders of various faith being used as a tool in the hand of the Britishers. Interestingly, no record of caste system so commonly associated with India has ever been found in any ancient Indian scriptures. On the contrary, a system of varnas was what was both formulated and executed. As mentioned in several Sanskrit and non-Sanskrit scriptures, the Varna system did not discriminate an individual from birth. Instead, it was an indicator of intellectual ability, occupation, and social standing of the person. The topic is sensitive. I'm repeating it again. Yesterday also I had a meeting with my student that it is very important that instead of just going uh, through social media interpretation or general viewpoint, of any um, press or media, we need to share in this course our personal experiences. The nature of humanity constantly need to be reviewed time and again. And I think this course will offer students this excellent platform to possibly share their views as they are the next generation and, who, and they are the one who need to make the reform. On behalf of PDPU and Salisbury University, I warmly once again welcome all the stakeholders and we hope we all will gather more memorable experiences full of enriching discussion, discoveries, knowledge sharing and learning through this course. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Ritu Sharma. And thank you everyone um, for sharing uh, your innovations, your inspiration and your charges for this course and for this collaboration. Um, when I was an undergraduate student, I was privileged enough to have the opportunity to engage in a couple of service learning trips abroad. Um, and in that process, I learned vital lessons about the United States role in um, our global world that really fundamentally changed my worldview and my life goals, um, kind of getting outside of my, <laughs> my little bubble and my own culture and my place. And so I'm really honored to be a part of this course to help better understand structures of racism and dominance in society. And I just wanna also second what Dr. Steele said. I'm also really honored to be a part of this course and particularly to be co-teaching it with Dr. Steele. As an applied psychologist, I'm really committed to using the tools of the discipline of psychology to better understand and improve communities and society. And my informal training in community psychology has taught me about the value of cross-cultural understanding as well as an, an understanding and grounding in history and sociology and po politics and other disciplines that fundamentally shapes and improves my work as a psychologist. 
And I'm really excited to share this really relevant and timely text with both SU and PDPU students and to use it as a springboard to foster better understanding of racism and its organizing structures so that we can work to dismantle the systems. And uh, Dr. Steele and I are both trained in uh, social psychology, so uh, but our perspectives do differ a little bit and I think a way that um, allowed us to really build a course that has a really great grounding in psychological theory, drawing upon principles of the book. So we're really looking forward to teaching the course. Um, I do wanna thank everyone for coming and attending today. Um, I do also wanna put in a little bit of a plug for the closing panel on January 22nd at uh, 8.30 to 10 a.m. Eastern. 7 to 8.30 p.m. IST. We will have a panel of uh, six faculty, three from SU and three from PDPU who will be uh, talking about the book from their disciplinary perspectives. And I do wanna encourage everyone to attend um, that, read the book with us and come back on the, on the 22nd. Um, at this time, I think we have concluded the public portion of the opening panel. And uh, we would like to uh, invite our students from SU and PDPU to please stay on. And uh, anyone, any student who's uh, considering enrolling in the course is also welcome to stay, but we will ask non-class participants to sign off so that we can get into specifics about how the course structure will run and allow our students and opportunities to meet each other. Thank you. Thank you. See you later this month. Thank you. Thank you, uh, sir, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a great course.